You're ready. Hi. Uh, hi, everyone. It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue. Maybe you are um, wondering why the dog didn't bark. I think because he's made off with something in my craft studio, um, sort of on the sly. He was trying to do that right before the video. So, um, so I think that's why he didn't bark, but he says hello. He sends his greetings. And this morning it's Friday. I cannot believe we are already at Friday. I had to check my calendar twice. Good morning. Um, this morning we are going to be doing a lovely ornament card that features a llama. And it's great. I put it together this morning in practically no time. And um, I'm going to show you how to do it, too. It's like an ornament. So it has, like, the holes for the ornaments. I put little pop dots in there. And it pops off as well. And then it has, interestingly enough, it has a little gift card holder inside. I think if I were going to do this again, I would probably jazz up this a bow with some glitter and maybe make this a different color or something. Hello, good morning to all my friends. Welcome. Um, and we are, you've been looking at those cards. Well, we're going to be making them all, I think, because they are so darling. And these are from our friends, Rob and Bob at Rob and Bob Studios. I chose the llama this morning, but I think I wanted to do this, the Santa, um, which is, I just noticed is also an ornament. So that's pretty awesome. And then the little elf is an ornament and the sloth, which I actually took apart a little bit just to have a look at. So um, I'm going to show you where to find these and how to put them together into today's Cricut Chat. So let me um, also start by saying hello to everyone. It's Friday. I can't believe it. Um, yeah, lots of pieces in that Santa one. Um, it's, so it's going to be a little challenging. So I didn't pick it for today. We have had a challenging week. Um, we've done a lot of really fun and interesting things this week. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, we are going to continue on with date night on Saturday night. And guess what? I made it to Joanne's fabric um, yesterday. And I picked out some felt and some flannel. So we are going to be making that awesome felt uh, and flannel I don't know. It's a banner. I think it's a banner from uh, Design Space. It's in the projects. And I sh mentioned it at yesterday's, at the end of yesterday's video. Um, it can be found under projects. And, uh, of course, here I go looking for a project when I should have checked out where it was. But it has snowflakes and these bucks these deer um, with, you know, with the horns and everything. But I think what I liked about it the most is that it features felt, which we're still trying to dissect, come up with a good um, way of cutting and doing uh, felt. But also it features a flannel, which I love. And I, and I actually, I picked up two different flannels. I'm going to just show you. Um, here is, here are what I came up with. I came up with this one, which is more like a farmhouse. It doesn't go with my house, but I thought I'd make it anyway. Maybe I have a friend who has like a farmhouse style. And then I have this uh, beautiful, it's a Christmas plaid. They didn't have the traditional tartan Christmas plaid, but um, I was able to get that. Then I also picked up some traditional red and green felt. Listen, at Joann's, they sell this on the bolt and it's fairly cheap and it's big. It's like, I think, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, there we go. I think it's like 108 inches or something. I don't know. Um, but it was like three bucks a yard, I think. 
Oh, no, wait, it was, it might have been a little more than that, but I only got half a yard because each one of these half yards, I'm going to make two of these banners out of. So I'm going to be able to get four yards, I'm sorry, four full banners out of this. Now, if you're going to the grocery store, to um, the grocery store, if you're going to the fabric store to buy the stuff for this for tomorrow night, um, you want to pick up, if you're not a sewer, um, and you don't maybe don't know what this is, but this is called um, interfacing. Okay, it is um, it's a stiffener, but you need to find interfacing, and I don't think you're going to be able to see what is on there. Maybe a little bit, but you see how it's kind of shiny like that. Interfacing sometimes it goes by a brand name, Pellon, or sometimes Heat and Bond. Um, what it does is it has this this adhesive here, and we're going to take in our plaid. Uh, flannel, and we are going to face it with this. And what that's going to do is two things. It's going to make our flannel stiffer, so it will hang right on our um, on our banner. But it will also make it easier to cut with our machine. Okay. Now I am going to be doing this cutting on the maker, and I will tell you. Um, if you didn't want, I'm going to actually cut the felt by hand because of our disastrous um, shot at felt on Monday. And I will tell you that um, I contacted my friends over at Cricut and they're sending me a new machine because I think um, I think I wore out my machine. <laughs> How did I ever do that? But um, they're going to take it to quality assurance. And maybe that's something you should know, too, is if you like all of a sudden or kind of creeps up on you that the machine is sort of acting funny, um, it's worth a shot to uh, contact customer care and tell them what's going on. And I'm going to tell you because uh, one of the watchers was having trouble with her scoring stylus popping out of the clamp. Has anybody else had that problem? Um, and so we came up with workaround, and that was uh, that was like an elastic that you would put around the uh, stylus, right? Hi, Teresa. Um, and then it would hold it in the clamp, which is a great workaround. But it is in itself a workaround. So um, she contacted customer care and they were very nice to her. It does, Alexandra. You're not the one that contacted customer. Okay, so Alexandra, listen up. And Leilani, listen up. So um, she contacted customer contacted customer care and they're actually going to be replacing her entire clamp they're sending her the whole clamp not the whole machine but just the clamp now with me I'm going to end up uh, getting a different machine I don't know if it'll be brand new but it's going to be fairly new and they're going to take this into the shop and have a look at it I think it has something to do with my um the guides that that guide the mats and lar and like thicker because I've been doing a lot of thicker things uh, like the felt and stuff and I think that's what my problem is so um so it's worth a shot to try this out okay good Leilani do that because if there's an inherent problem in that product then they'll um. Yeah, they do ask for a lot, you know, and I guess, you know, it's hard. They did. They That was so is Roslyn. Roslyn um, did, and they sent her a new clamp. And did you get it yet, Roslyn? Um, the customer care, I got to say, you know, three cheers for customer care. I think it got a little maligned. Um, Put a paper with the crest. Yes. So Alexandra's saying, you know, be prepared when you're calling customer care because they like to see, I don't want to say evidence, but they like to see visual proof of what the problem is. And that's not because they don't trust you. It's because they want to fix the problem for everyone else. Okay. So if it's a, 
if it's a problem that everyone else is experiencing or other people are experiencing, they want to fix the problem. And there's a difference there. You know, I know that they ask for like, I need for me, they ask me for pictures and the video and, and, um, uh, an explanation of what's going on and all of that because they're going to take my actual machine and bring it into customer quality assurance, right? So always, always, you know, if you have a problem and it's sort of a one-off, then okay, it's a one-off. But if it starts to happen all the time, um, Kelly's saying she a mat cleaning mat or a good way to get it, clean it with. Yeah. So Kelly, we can talk about um, cleaning our machines because I have that problem too. Um, and the thing is you can clean your, your machine, but you do need to be careful about one in particular, that main bar. It's like a round bar. That's the one that brings the carriage or the two clamps back and forth. Do not clean that because that has a very tiny amount of grease or oil there that allows this to go back and forth. So don't clean that. But the rest of it can be cleaned. And I would recommend, don't spray anything on your machine, but I recommend getting something like this. It's a pre-moistened tech wipes. And I use it for my keyboard. Um, and But I also use it in my machine because I get a lot of gunk in there. Um, what's an air boob, Dorothy? An air boob? <laughs> I don't know what that is, but um, but I use these little tech wipes, and I and I do clean up my machine. You never know it by looking at my machine, but I I do clean it up um, on a regular basis. Just stay away from that that bar that has a little very limited amount of grease on it because you don't want for your clamp and you know you have the whole carriage thing not to be able to move right. Yeah, you could use baby wipes. I use these. You know what? I got these. I think I got these at, yep, Target, $1. It's called a pre-moist and tech wipe. I don't know. It's streak-free, 20 wipes. Dries quickly. Removes dust, dirt, fingerprints. All right, so something like this. I suppose if you have baby wipes, I don't have a baby anymore, so I don't have baby wipes. Anyway, getting back to our... um to our tomorrow's night's makeup. We are going to be doing, if I can find it, because I had trouble yesterday, and there's so many projects here, so it's a good kind of trouble, I guess. But we're going to make a really pretty felt and flannel banner. If you read the directions, which I did, um, it is actually a felt and flannel. I think it's only called flannel, but let's see if I can't find it. Uh, all right. It's a felt and flannel. <laughs> so maybe what I'll do is I'll type in flannel, but I'm not going to get anywhere. But no, uh, no, 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 of course not. Of course not, Rita. What are you thinking of? Um, but yeah, so it's in the Christmas area. It's called Felt and Flannel, and I will share the um, project so that you don't have to go through this like I am going through it. But it's really cute. It has these uh, really big snowflakes that you can cut out in either white or glitter white iron on. And I'm going to show you how to sort of cut it all. And um, let's see, what else am I going to show you? Oh, I'm going to also show you how to cut it out in paper with. Um, um, iron on uh, for the for the flannel because there are some people that maybe they have a joy or they don't want to get or they can't get to the fabric store and they still want to cut it out. So I'm going to show you how to cut it out in paper as well. All right. So stay tuned tomorrow for this project. It's going to be fabulous. Um, <laughs> we're going to have a whole lot of fun tomorrow night. Plus there'll be prizes, you know. Anyway. So let me put my flannel back, my felt and my flannel back. Oh, all right. So remember, you want heat and bond or fusible interfacing if you want to cut this on your Explore. That's the big difference here. Um, what makes it easier to cut something Um with your maker or even your explore is that it's called bonded 
banners. I found it under banners. Thank you, Diane. Uh, all right, you know what I'll do? I'll do all categories and I'll just type in flannel. How's that? I know it has flannel in the name. There it is, flannel Christmas banner. So this is what we're doing. It is extraordinarily large. I mean, I look at it, I'm like, how big could it be? But but it's pretty big. And I think uh, about a half a yard of, um, I, I went a yard, but I thought I could get more than one out of it. Um, I think a half a yard of the flannel and a half a yard of the felt should be fine. And then the only other thing you need is iron-on and interfacing and then something to hang it with, Okay. Um, if you cannot find flannel, but you still want to make this or, or felt even, you can do it in paper. You absolutely could do it in paper. Or if you found cotton, like a plaid cotton, you could do it in that as well. So don't despair. Um, so, uh, so there you go. There you go. That's what we're going to do tomorrow. We're going to have a blast. It's called a flannel Christmas banner, so don't you worry about that. So let's go back to, uh, let's see, how do I go back to, all right, here we go. All right, so we're going back to this, and um, my dog is distracting me because he's trying to scratch his ear with the cone of shame on. Oh, man. Yeah, I think it's a really nice banner, and it's kind of also a good, do you hear that? He's He's trying to scratch his ears or his ear um, with his paw, his back paw, but he's got the cone of shame on, so it's making a lot of noise. Oh, poor thing. Anyway, um, I have to go in there and scritch his ears for him. <laughs> okay, so th that's a great, also a jumping off point. So um, I found some really nice, uh, I know, come here, Banji, Banji. What are you doing, honey? Um, I found some really nice plaid um, iron-on. Yeah, I know. Here you go. I'm, I'm scratching his ears now, guys. So um, so I found some really nice plaid iron-on, so I'm going to try to use that as well. And we'll do a couple of different ones, and then maybe I'll have a couple I can give away. But at, at the very least, i got to take down my trick-or-treat banner. Um, it's so high up that I had to have my son put it up there, and I still haven't had him take it down. So, oh, my life, my life. Um, anyway, so let's get back to this. Uh, yeah, does that feel good? Okay, so let's get back to this. All right, so we're doing these ornament cards, and there are more than one of them, and I am going to just uh, shade these out or hide them so that you can see the one that we are working on. It's called the Fa La La Llama. <laughs> I just laugh saying that, but it is a really adorable ornament. See how it is tucked in there. You can't actually see in the back because there's an inside thing here, but it's tucked in and it's really clever. I think it's really beautiful. You could even go further on this, do some glitter action here. Um, I, I used pop dots, and so it's very cute, and I'm going to show you how to put it together, and I, I kind of debated, should I put a little ornament string on there? I don't know what you guys think, but I might put an ornament string and sort of tuck it in the back so that when whoever receives this, they can just sort of take it off and hang it on their tree, right? Um, oh, okay, Charity, I'm not the only one, right? All right, so let me show you where to find these in case you want to replicate this project. Um, we're going to go, let me just shade this out. We're going to go to images and my favorite place, image sets. Now, I know that these are part of Rob and Bob Studio Designs. This also is in projects, but you've seen how great I am at finding projects in the project area. So, um, so I'm just going to type in Rob and um, in the image set area, and it brings up Rob and Bob everything. Well, not everything, because... There's one set called Mary Everything that is not listed here because it doesn't have Rob and Bob on there. So anyway, this one here, it's called The Best of Rob and Bob, has, um, has these ornament gift card holders or ornament card holders ornament cards, ornament cards in here. So here we've got a sloth. And then we also have, there's our llama. There is Santa Claus. 
And um, the fourth one is this elf. I don't think there are any more of the ornament cards. There are a couple of Christmas cards, but not ornament cards here. Mm, no. So I think there's only that those four. And uh, so let's pull in fa la 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 llama. <laughs> um, and let's pull that in so we can have a look. I'm going to go down a little bit just so I can show you. Here's what you get. You get an envelope. You guys know how I feel about envelopes. So we ungroup them and remove them, but you keep it if you want to keep it. So you regroup and make sure that it's sized appropriately. Seven by 10 is a great size. Now, if you want to do this for the joy you absolutely could the only thing that you'd have to worry about is um you could you could make mostly just make the ornament and this part and put it on a card face that would work because all of these pieces are smaller than than the let me just check yeah they're all smaller because they're kind of like built on each other definitely could make this part without the um without the card base um, and that would just work. You just cut your, cut your, uh, card stock down. So, all right. So let's see, I wanted to just change one thing about this. And that is I want for this gift card holder to be in a separate color. Cause I think in white is kind of blah. And, um, so I probably want to change it to, um, I don't know, like a Christmas, design uh like a patterned paper so what i'm gonna do ungroup it and we're gonna just kind of peel it off here so you see how the face is like three pieces and that's where i use those pop dots right and then they have this piece of gold and i would probably make this glitter but that won't be a problem it's just a matter of choosing glitter so where is our there it is under everything. So there is our gift card holder. Um, and so I think I would change the color on this just simply because it cuts out with the white. And um, I, you know, I, I just think it would look better in some sort of sort of pattern or something like that. Um, and then also, you know, you could also add a sentiment here or personalized name or whatever you want to do here. You can do that. But here, let me just go ahead and change the color so that it will print on its own uh, paper, so to speak. Or if I wanted to do like, if I glittered the bow, I could make the bow and the gift card holder the same. So let's do that. So I'm going to go over here to Color Sync because I love Color Sync. Okay. So here's Color Sync. If you don't know what Color Sync is, it's a bunch of, um, it's all of our, of our, um, elements of this card sorted by the color. So this would mean how they'd be sorted on a mat, right? When you went to cut it. So if you look in here, and it is quite small, but if you look in here, you can see on the white. Um, wait, Miss Rita, how do you make the layers key on the right of the, of the, when I pick a group of, uh, okay, we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so if you look here on the, under the white, you'll see there's one, two, three, four, five elements that are white. Well, the the three on the farthest right are the llama. We want to keep him white, okay? And if we wanted to change this uh, piece a different color, we can, it's this one. If we want to change this piece, it's the one at first, okay? So if I want to change this to, say, the glitter bow, I would just touch on it or whatever, use my mouse to pull it down to the red. You see that? And now it shows those two things being cut out from the same thing. If I didn't want it to be any color that already exists, then what I would have to do is go to layers and choose that item. You see here, now, this item is, it's an attachment. It consists of scoring and cutting. And someone was just asking, what do we do when, um, 
when we want to make a change to one of the layers. When you click on it and you go up here to line type, it says multiple. What do we do about that? Okay, easy peasy. All we need to do is go over here to where that um, piece of of attached piece is, right? You see this says score and cut. We just want to click on the cut. Okay, and then if you go up to line type up here, you'll notice there's our red. So I want to change the red to some other color. So I'm just going to choose, I don't know, mm-hmm beige because it doesn't really matter. I just want it to appear on a separate mat. Okay. And that's what I did. I changed it to beige. Now when I go to color sync, we have the addition of beige and we still have all of our other colors. Does that make sense? Does that answer your, um, your question about how do I pick a group item? It does not get dark enough for my eyes to see. Oh, how does it, it doesn't get your eyes dark enough for your... Oh, I know. Hmm. I have problems with my eyes, especially at night. So let me think on that because mostly I just squint. Um, <coughs> but I thought you were asking about um, how do you change the color when it's an attached thing. Okay. So, hmm. I know. I'm, I'm concerned about that. I suppose you can make your your screen larger and that would be within your um computer or whatever device you're using if you make your screen larger you'd be able to see everything a little bit larger um that might be a help it's something i might try too okay the gray is darker on mine. Well, yeah, maybe you need to have to play with your settings on whatever, your device or your computer, um, so that the coloring comes in darker. Yes, thank you, Charity, screen resolution settings. So um, uh, let me talk about it offline, or let me think about it offline and get back to you on, on the best way to go about it, Michelle, Okay. Um, all right. So anyway, here is our card. It cuts out pretty normally. Nothing really super important to see about the cutting um, is uh, the only thing that I probably would cut out in intricate cuts um, is this fa -la, -la, la llama just simply because I don't know. It's, it's a lot of loopy things, right? Um, so, but other than that, this cuts out in regular setting. I used eight and a half by 11 inch pieces of paper that I had scraps for, and then I put it together and I'm going to show you how to put it together. And then we're off to the races. Okay. So let me move you, um, down here. Any other questions about color sync or changing color for anything? You let me know. Okay. All right, do I, I do Snap Mat. Snap Mat, if you don't know what Snap Mat is, it's um, something you would use for your iPad where you take a picture of your, um, your mat as you have it set up um, and then you place your, your items onto the mat. I will show you how to use it. It's kind of advanced, I think, for some of our, our watchers. And I don't want to overwhelm people. So, but it's a good, it's a good little tool. Definitely need to uh, show you guys how to do it. All right, let me move you um, down here. So we are going down here and this is our card. Now I will point out that this front of the card has um, these little what do you call them? Slits in here. You don't need to keep them in here, but it's so that your ornament doesn't, you don't want to stick your ornament into, like, see that? It comes off. You don't want to stick your ornament onto the card. But you know what? I, on the bottom, I actually just used a glue dot like that. And I'm seeing that it's actually pulling up some of that some of that color it won't really matter. So maybe you do want to use the slits, but I wanted to try out the glue dot just to see if that would work. Plus, uh, I think I'm supposed to put it in this part. I'm supposed to put in here. 
Anyway, I put the, <laughs> I put the the inside front of the card together, so I can't exactly stick my fingers in there. But that's the way it's supposed to go. And then it comes off, and here is your ornament. So cute. And you could even write on the back here uh, the year, which I definitely recommend because oh my gosh, what was I going through my my memories on Facebook? the other day and I came across something I made years ago that I had taken a picture of and definitely take pictures of what you make guys even if you think it's stinky because oh my gosh I went back and I was like wow I have gotten so much better and I I just loved that I could look at it and say wow I didn't know how to do this before and so that's why I always advocate take a picture and put your um, your name and your date on the back of whatever it is that you're giving, sort of like a Hallmark, Hallmark card, okay? So that's what this front is about, all right? Where is it? The slits on there. That's what that's about. So let's see. The, um, the gift card holder, easy enough. It has three score marks here that we want to just fold, um, and I fold them both ways because I like that crisp fold look. You could also use your, um, where is it? My little scraper to get a really crisp, even crisper look. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to use glue and we're going to adhere this to the inside of the card foily stock. You know, Kelly, um, uh, Michael's has some really good foil. I love the gold, but it is thin, but they also have a lot of, um, foil just in general. And that is part of their recollections program. I, you know what, the way I look at it is, um, it used to be people were always looking for the glitter, you know, glitter, glitter, glitter. And now, the big trend is foil. And so you're going to start to see more foil pop up inside of um, paper pads or individually pieces. And then eventually you're going to get, um... oh, <laughs> yes, Annette. All right. So there's our gift card holder, um, which can go here or wherever you want it to go. And again, I would probably cut this out either in that glitter. Whoops, what did I do? Um, so I would cut it out in the glitter. I'm not paying attention. Um, or in a patterned paper. And you see how the sides sort of go in there and holds inside of there. Such a cute idea, by the way, because you don't want it to like them to open it up and they're dealing with the ornament. And then if you put a gift card in there, it to fall out, you know? Um, so there's that. Let's put together a llama. He's so cute. So here is that gold foil paper. This I bought at, um, Michaels. It's from Michaels. It's thinner than their other foils, just so that you know. So then it gets built. He gets built like this. So here's the green. And um, we're going to hold off on putting the bow on there. But just so that you know, there's the bow. And then here are our three pieces. There are a couple of really teeny tiny pieces that I'll show you his eyelash and I always say that it's a he, her eyelash and her, her ears and stuff. So this is, um, the llama would be really cute if you cut this, uh, the top piece out in glitter as well. So there is something to consider, but you, you can either glue all of these pieces flat, like on here, or you can bring in our old friend, the glue, uh, the foam dots, the two adhesive side foam dots, which I like. Yeah, you're right, Annette. Deboss. Annette likes to deboss, I think. She mentioned it a couple of times. I think she likes it, which I'm fine with because it is kind of fun. 
You absolutely could do that, Nancy. Great idea. Nancy's saying, would you be able to enlarge that gift card to put in the lottery ticket? And, um, oh, someone's going to love you for that. So, <laughs> yes, you can. But when you um, make it big, when you're looking at the size of it, be aware of the fact that these sides are going to fold in. So make this part the size of the lottery ticket, which might be like here. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. So here are here are our little um, pieces of our head. There's the back piece, the middle piece, and then there's the front piece. And I'm just busily putting these... Um, these foam dots, if you've never seen them before, they're really cheap and you can pick them up anywhere, including Hobby Lobby, Joanne's, Michael's, Dollar Tree, all different stuff. They don't have to be circles, but this these ones ha these ones are. Sometimes they're squares, um, but basically it's just a piece of foam that has adhesive on either side. And we're just putting them in sort of strategic places. And then we peel off the other side of the um, of the adhesive, you see that? And then we're going to take our second piece and line it up so that those holes match. And there you go, all right? We do the same thing with that middle piece, take off these little, um, these little circle dots. And then we're gonna line it up to the the hole there because you want to be able to put your string all the way through there okay and then all of a sudden your llama has a depth right and um the cool thing is and i'm going to show you how to put on his face or her face so don't worry about that but the cool thing is that she actually goes on so here's our bow but she actually goes here under sort of in in here. So does this make sense? Boop. No, here. This is where this she goes. So don't put the bow on before you put the head on, okay? So let's do this, the green, the wreath. I love how this comes out with the gold accent in the back. So cute. If you wanted to get really fancy, you could start, um, you could put different color background and you could do that using my favorite little tool contour. Um, or you can keep it simple and just make them all gold, <laughs> which is what I chose to do this morning. But given enough thought and um, supplies, I can do anything, right? Okay, so here's our green. You do want to be careful with glue on gold or or any foil because it doesn't come off the way, even if it's our fancy uh, fancy glue, it does get kind of smeary looking. So you do need to be careful about getting keeping the glue away from there. Excellent point, Brenda. You get brownie points. Brenda's saying if you um, run out of these dots or when you run out of the dots, you can always cut these pieces here. And I'll show you what she was saying. You can cut these pieces right here into any size and use them the same as the dots. And you'll get twice the usage out of it. Excellent point. Definitely a frugal thinker. Thank you, Brenda. So here's my, uh, now that I've got my uh, my llama, first I put the green on, then I can do my llama. I didn't put um, three sets of those foam dots because I thought that this really needed to, this layer needed to lay flat, okay? So once again, just going to put it here. It lines up on the bottom and then also on the top. So now I can just easily put in that string or ornament, baker's twine or whatever. We can just, this goes together so quickly too. Definitely cut out more than one. Keep one for yourself and send one off. Something like that. That's what I do. 
when because you guys might be like what do you do with all this stuff well <laughs> most of the time I just give it to my senior center friends but if I if I make more than one I just find places to send them all right, so here's almost done. Now we have to do the sign and also her face. I suppose we could have done the face before. Um, it's up to you how you want to do it. So she gets these cute little cutouts for her, the inside of her ears. One and two. And then we have the little uh, bridle, bridle, bridle. Um, I might run out of power on my phone. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And then we have the eyelash, which goes actually down, and the nose. If I lose you guys, it's because my phone died. Um, so just so you know. Ooh, okay, here we go. All right, there it is. And I'm just going to put that glue on there real quick so you can see the end result. Oh, I hope I don't lose my... I knew that was going to happen. I gave away my um, my cord so I couldn't plug it in at my desk. And oh, no, oh, no. Okay. Hey, Mike, how are you? Um, all right. So here we go. Yeah, glitter requires a lot more glue, um, Annette. And so putting together the face pieces would mean a lot more glue. So you'd have to consider that. All right, so that's how you do the face. And I'll go back and finish that up. And then simply, same thing with this. You're going to want to layer it. Um, and and uh, so layer it. And then you may want to use that um, the pop dots for that. But I just put it on the top here. And then you're done. You just take your ornament and put it in there. And it it goes in um in a five by seven inch envelope. Yeah, I've got to run. If I'm so sorry, I don't mean to rush anybody, but I think my phone's gonna die, so I won't be of any use to you. Um, <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, and we will see you again tomorrow. Definitely watch the replay where we're we're talking about tomorrow night. Okay, thanks everybody. Take care.